wires. Where we're going, we don't need wires. Hey everyone, thank you for joining me. So today we're looking at wireless routers and whether or not you should upgrade from your internet service provider router to a top of the line Wi-Fi 6 router. So why would anybody want to do that in the first place? Well, let me explain how I got in this position. So I do a lot of gaming and a lot of VR. And I constantly struggle with internet connection. So I pay for the fastest possible internet connection you can get from Virgin. And fair to them, they deliver it. So I get 540 megabytes per second if I stand a millimeter away from the router. But as soon as I take more than one step away, that gets slower and slower and slower. Now recently, I moved my office slash gaming room slash VR studio quite a distance away from my router and that left me in quite dire trouble with my internet. So I found that the 540 they promised me dropped to as low as 30 if I could find a signal in that room. Now that was, that was quite a challenge and I didn't want to leave it there. And the first time you ask anyone on the internet if you should do something to upgrade your Wi-Fi, particularly for gaming, they all tell you, no, 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 Wi-Fi is not the way to go. You want a wired connection. You should be using a power line adapter. A power line adapter, one of these little things, see if I can get that in focus. That is a little unit. You plug one in next to your router in the um, wall socket and one in next to your PC, and then you use a, a ethernet cable to connect the one by your PC to your PC. Now that in effect gives you a wired connection. So what it's doing is using the wires of your house to transfer that signal. Now that's fantastic if you live in a new build house with great top of the line wiring, because it will be perfect. For me, I don't, and it wasn't. I actually found that my internet speed only picked up by about five to 10 megabytes per second. I was getting about 50 to 60 with the power line adapter, and that still was nowhere near good enough for me. So the next most common way to try and increase your signal is to use a booster. And some internet service providers will even give you a booster. I've got an example of one here. We've got a TP-Link booster. So these is just one unit and you place this halfway in between your problem spot and your router. So that grabs hold of the signal and just boosts it at a slightly higher rate to wherever you're trying to get it to. Now that does work quite well. So I managed to get mine up to about 180, 190 when using that booster. Now it's not a perfect system. So what it does is it gives you multiple connections to choose from anywhere in your house. And you're supposed to pick the best one based on the position you're in the house. And that's really annoying. That's a bit too finicky. And it's not just something you can have running in the background and forget about. It also means that there's another device that has to be communicated with and it increases the ping. The ping is how quickly your, your internet devices can communicate to the internet and then receive a signal back really important if you're playing fast paced games particularly shooters that you've got a low ping and i found that mine was creeping up to sort of 50 or 60 when using that that tp link booster and that's just nowhere near good enough for me i wasn't happy with that so i wanted to improve things now i play with my oculus quest 2 vr headset quite a lot and there's a lot of talk on the internet about how important the wi-fi 6 capabilities are for that headset I've also heard it mentioned many times that if you want to play wirelessly using virtual desktop, then you should absolutely be using a Wi-Fi 6 connection. I've also heard this reputed by others, so I wasn't sure if it was entirely correct or not, but I knew there must be something in it. So is Wi-Fi 6 something I needed in my life? Now to use Wi-Fi 6 across the board, you need devices that have Wi-Fi 6 receivers. So what I did was I went out and picked up a Wi-Fi 6 PCIe card to go in my PC and I picked up a top of the line Wi-Fi 6 router. I'm gonna show you that now. So this is the Netgear Nighthawk AX6 router. That's an absolutely top of the line device. This promises um, 4.5 times faster speeds, suitable for up to 25 devices. It's got Wi-Fi 6 capabilities. It's got beam forming technology. This should absolutely be upgraded in my current setup. Now these don't come cheap and I wasn't sure if this was going to be worth it, but I knew I wanted to never have to think about my Wi-Fi again. I wanted it set up, I wanted no issues, I wanted no dropouts, no signal issues, and hopefully this would get me it. So did it. 
So I ordered and installed the router. I ordered and installed the PCIe card for my PC. Of course, the Quest already had the capabilities, as do most modern phones, such as top of the line iPhones or Samsung devices. So my house is pretty well kitted out for it now. Were well, the results as good as I hoped? Well, they were pretty good. So I found that in my office, which was the main problem area, I managed to get equal or better to download speeds than I had with the booster, but I didn't have any of the ping issues. My ping was now incredibly fast. So I got it down to as low as nine. That's fantastic. And that will have a massive impact when I'm playing gaming online. I also find that I now don't need any other connections in my house. I can sort of, everything is covered from this one unit, which makes it nice, quick and easy. I'm able to get the 540 megabytes that I was previously getting close to the unit, but it still doesn't spread right across the house. So in the office, I'm now sat around sort of 190, 200. I'm really happy with that. That's, that's really good. And everywhere else in the house is super fast. I'm getting that, that lightning fast speed down in the living room where the TV is connected to it. And that's really useful to me. So I'm happy with that. Now, all the promises I'd heard that the Quest 2 would kind of step up a gear in how it used virtual desktop turned out to be false. So I saw little to no change at all when using virtual desktop with a Wi-Fi 6 device. I don't know if that's something that can improve in the future, but as it stands, it really isn't essential. So if you're starting to think you might need that for your VR setup, I'd say, don't worry. What I would say is you do need a five gigahertz connection. Now, most internet service providers nowadays give you that anyway, but some of the cheaper selections don't. So perhaps that's something you should be looking to if you're getting real, real trouble. Since installing the router, I've had no drops in signal at all, and we've had no none of the issues that I was previously getting. I now don't have to think about my internet. It runs in the background and everything is smooth and as it should be, I'm delighted. So the big question is, should you be upgrading? Now, if I'm honest, I think you probably should be upgrading away from your internet service provider router. The internet service providers give you the cheapest possible router they can get hold of. Now put Virgin Media as the example. Virgin Media, as the time of this recording, have about 15 million customers on their, their internet service. If they were to provide a router that costs 80 to 100 quid to those 16 million customers, that would cost them an absolute fortune. But they're never gonna do that when they can get away with providing the hubs that they currently provide at a real low cost. So that means there's a good chance you're gonna get something extra from it. For that reason, I would definitely be looking into an upgrade, but I wouldn't do what I've done. So I wouldn't go for a top of the line router because I just don't think they're bringing enough to the table. I've watched lots of reviews of other people who've done a similar thing, but gone for, you know, cheaper, often about half the price routers of what I've done. And they've got almost exactly the same results. So as it stands, I wouldn't say you need that sort of top of the line router, just a good quality one. Now they will last years, so you shouldn't need to be upgrading from this for, for a very long time. They're, they're really hard wearing devices and it should be all set for the future. But there is absolutely diminishing returns on the more you spend. Now as you go up the ranks, there are more and more features that are put in, but they're features that if I'm honest, most people just don't need. You probably don't need and I don't really need. So you don't need that top of the line router. Just pick what is right for you. Have a little scan round and try and get something that meets your requirements. If you're struggling for range, there are units that are particularly built to add more range. If you're struggling because of um, low speeds, then there will be devices that help you with that. If you've got too many devices connected and that's causing dropouts, then look for one that has more streams than a, than a cheaper one and you'll get a really, really good result. Well, that's it from me. Hopefully you got something out of that. Do us a favor. If you enjoyed this video, press the like button. If you'd like to see more content like that in the future, press subscribe. It really helps me out. And I'll see you again next time. Thank you very much. Goodbye.